hi, grade 11s. Um, you don't know me yet. Marilies took our lessons last week because I was sick, so I didn't get a chance to meet you all. So um, my name's Jennifer, or you can call me Miss G. I don't mind either. If you feel uncomfortable calling me by my first name, then Miss G or ma'am is absolutely fine. Um, and we are on a trig journey that was started last week. And so I believe you did grade 10 revision, and then you started some Pythag questions. And so I just want to get an idea of how that Pythagoras went last week. So can you please give the question that is on the screen a try for me? Make sure you have your calculators with you today. Make sure you have your brains with you today. We're going to need both of those. A piece of paper and a pen. And give this question that is on the screen a try for me. Welcome to those of you who've just joined. I'm Miss G. I'm going to be taking you through the rest of Trig A. While you're working on this question, can you please do me a favor and make your way over to the chat for me and just let me know um, if you've already done trig in class in grade 11. Hi, Lisa. And um, if you are enjoying it, so well, give me like a scale of zero to 10 on how trig has been going. So if you haven't done it, you can say I haven't done it. But from grade 10, I feel like a seven. Or I have done it and I'm feeling great. I'm on a nine. Just give me an idea of where you are at with your trig. Okay, <laughs> okay. So we've got some way to go. Cool. Jolene, that's a great number. The cool thing about trig, especially grade 11 trig, is that it makes up most of your trig next year. So it's, it's like we're kind of getting ready for a trick, which is cool. If you haven't had a chance yet, make your way over to the chat for me. Let me know if you've done trig yet or if you haven't done it yet in class and where your comfort level is. So how you are feeling about it at the moment. Zero is absolutely terrible. I hate everything to do with trig. 10 is, it's amazing. I love it. It's great. Just give me an idea of where you're at. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'm seeing some high numbers here. So that's making me very optimistic about our next few lessons together. If at any point I am going too fast, just let me know. You can either just tell me to slow down in the chat or you can unmute yourself and talk to me. I'm happy with either, whatever you prefer. If you wanna answer a question, answer a question. You can ask at any point. I won't feel like you're interrupting me, okay? All right, but let's get going. So let's have a look at this first question. I'm going to turn off my video because I need to turn my screen and you're going to be staring at my ceiling, but I'm here. Um, and so if you need me, then just let me know. Okay, first thing that when we're dealing with any type of question like this is we know we're going to be needing our quadrants. Okay, so I'm going to draw those out over here. And depending on how you learn them, um, you're going to label them. The way I find the easiest is all students take care. That's how I always remember it, but some people remember it as cost. Um, and yeah, it's uh, some people, so some teachers teach it as all stations to Cape Town. So whichever way you remember is fine with me. I remember it as all students take care. Next thing we want to do is we want to start rearranging this to get an idea of what sine theta would be as a fraction by itself. So I'm going to have 10 sine theta is equal to eight. I'm just going to chuck that 8 onto the other side. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 10. So sine theta is going to equal 8 over 10. So now this is telling me an important thing. It's telling me that sine is positive. 
And these letters tell me where things are positive. So this is telling me that all of my ratios are positive. So it would be positive in quadrant one. This is telling me sine is positive. So it would also be in quadrant two. So those are the two quadrants where sine is positive. Okay. Then we have to look at our next piece of information. Here, it's telling me that tan is negative. Now, I know that tan is going to be positive here and it's going to be positive there, which means it will be negative there, and it will be negative there. And so we look at where do we have two ticks? We have two ticks in quadrant two, which means that's where I'm going to draw my little situation. Okay, then we need to think about what our different trig ratios are with regards to x, y, and z, uh, r. <laughs> so let's write that out. So sine theta is y over r, cos theta is x over r, and tan theta is y over x. Okay, cool. So let's look at what information we have right now. We know that this is 8 over 10, which means our y value is 8, which makes sense if you have a look there. Okay, and our r value, which is this value here, is 10. Now we need to figure out what our x value would be. And it's important to look at the Cartesian plane and think, well, that x value is going to be a negative because it's on the left side of zero. So now I can just use Pythagoras. I know this is 10. I know that that's 8. If I use Pythagoras, I would say that x is equal to the square root of 10 squared minus 8 squared, which means x is equal to 6. But we know that it has to be a negative, so x is negative 6. Now, all of this is the hard work, because now we get to just answer our question, which is like the nice, easy, quick part. All they wanted was cos theta. And cos theta is x over r. We know x is negative 6. We know r is 10, and that's where we end it. Or you could have ended it at negative 3 over 5, but that is where we stop a question like this. Okay, <laughs> who landed up getting to this answer? Let me know. How did this answer go? Did it go okay? Did you get some of the way? Did you not finish? Um, did you get the right answer? Let me know how this question went. You can either unmute yourselves and tell me, or you can just let me know in the chat. I don't mind, whichever you prefer. Did it bring back some memories from last week? Oh, good. Nice. Excellent. You're kind of guaranteed to have a question like this in your exam. So it's like a nice thing to know that you can definitely do and you can definitely get those four or five marks. Awesome. Another one who got it right. Okay. It wasn't finished, but on the right track. That's okay. Great. Awesome. Okay. We're going to do one more thing. Well, actually, can you just let me know, does anyone need me to stay on this? page just you can use the little emoji with the hand up if you need some more time on here otherwise I'm going to scroll down okay all good <laughs> okay at least I'm taking that thumbs up as it's an all good not I need to wait here I'm hoping I'm taking that right <laughs> Okay, I'm going to move down and we're going to look at one more question um, on Pythagoras before we move on to reduction today. Thanks, <laughs> Lisa. So, this was the last one. There wasn't quite time to get it done last week. I just want to do one of them. So, if you see this in your exam or test, it doesn't feel foreign to you. Okay. I'm going to talk you through some of it and then I'm going to let you work some of it out. In this situation, we, because we're dealing with something in terms of M, and they love M for some reason. Sometimes they use M and sometimes they use P, but those are like their go-to letters with these types of questions. 
we don't actually have to work out any type of quadrant. We can just draw our triangle. So I'm just going to draw a right angle triangle here. It's a terrible triangle, which you, let's actually fix it. It's so bad. Okay, cool. And I know I'm dealing with 65 degrees. So I'm going to put that 65 degrees in. And if it's a 90 degree triangle, I also know that this angle here would be 25 degrees. So we kind of want to fill in all the information that we have. We also know that sine of 65 degrees is equal to m. How can I write m as a fraction? So I want m to be over something. What would m be over? How could I write this as a fraction? m over what? OK, so I can't divide it by the 65, which is a good guess. Lots of people do that because the 65 is connected to the sign. They're like one. They're bonded together. So we don't want to divorce them. We want to keep them married to each other. A one, exactly. We're going to make that M over one. OK, and remember, sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I'm looking at the 65 degrees over here, my opposite is m and my hypotenuse is one. And then I need to work out what this adjacent is by using Pythagoras. So this is going to be, let's, let's just call it x for the moment, okay? x is going to be the square root of one squared minus m squared which just gives us one squared, which is just one. So the square root of one minus m squared. And I can't simplify it more than that. It is just what it is. And so this side down here becomes the square root of one minus m squared. Okay, now you have all the information you need to answer these two questions. So I'd like you to give A and B a try. I'm just gonna give you a couple of minutes to do them and then we'll talk through the answers. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Um, I have a question, right? Um, when you put, um, when you put uh, x is equal to uh, squared to one, uh, one squared minus uh, m squared, right? Yes, yes. So uh, how can um how can like um when you like you, you do it again and then it's gonna be one and the m still has the squid? Oh okay, so very good question. I'm not getting rid of the square. Um, I'm not saying that that's canceling that square over there. I'm just saying that one squared, so one times one is just one. So saying one squared and one means the same thing. But I can't simplify the square root and the squares because these are two different terms inside the root. So we have to keep them as they are. But you, you, if you feel uncomfortable with that, you can still write this as one squared. It's totally fine. Does that make sense? Okay. Are you sure? If it doesn't, I'm happy to explain it again. Yeah, it does. Okay, okay. good. Okay. No, it does. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Remember your soccer toa? I don't know if that's how you remember it. Okay, let's start looking at our first answer over here. If I'm looking for cos of 65 degrees, remember cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and we're looking at 65 degrees over here. 
So my adjacent is this root one minus m squared. And my hypotenuse is one. So you don't even need to have that hypotenuse. You can just say the square root of one minus m squared. And that's your whole answer. So these types of questions, this first question would be worth three marks because you're getting all the marks that you need from having had to make a diagram and figure all of that out. Then tan 25 degrees, because we were smart at the beginning of this question and we put in those 25 degrees over there, it wasn't a tricky question. It didn't throw us for a loop. And we know tan is opposite over adjacent. So now we're looking at this 25 degrees. So our opposite is also the square root of one minus m squared. And our adjacent is m. Okay, so this is the last type of Pythag question that you can be asked. Um, the rest of them you went through last week. Cool. But today we are starting something fun. We are starting reduction. Okay. And reduction is like the bulk of grade 11 trig. So if you understand reduction, you understand grade, grade 11 trig, which is awesome. Okay, so what I'm doing over here is I've just got a Cartesian plane and we're just gonna talk through a few things. And this is just to actually understand why we can do reduction and why reduction works so that we're not just learning rules off by heart. It actually makes sense with what we're doing. So let's have a look at what I've done. I've drawn a 30 degree angle, which creates a special triangle for us. And I know that sine of 30 degrees is equal to a half because it's a special angle. And so I know that my opposite is gonna be one, my hypotenuse is gonna be two, and then I can work out this adjacent through Pythagoras, which would be the square root of two squared minus one squared, which will be the square root of three. Okay, so I'm just doing that just to get an idea of what my different numbers are. So if I'm looking at this point over here, if I wanted to find what sine theta is, what cos, let's not say theta, let's say sine 30, cos 30, and tan 30. Can you guys give me some of those answers? What would sine 30, I've already given you that answer, so that should be nice and easy. What would sine 30 be equal to as a fraction? Look at your triangle, look at what your opposite is, look at what your hypotenuse is. What would sine 30 be? Beautiful, excellent, sine 30 is a half. My opposite is one, my hypotenuse is two. Great, okay. What would cos 30 be? Nice job, guys. All of these answers coming through are beautiful. Now I'm wanting cos 30. Yes, yes, good. Root three over two, excellent. And the last one, tan 30. Okay, so if we're using, yeah, if you've rationalized your denominator, that's absolutely fine. I'm just gonna say, my opposite of my adjacent, so one over root three. But if you've rationalized the denominator, so you have root three over three, that's perfect, great. Okay, yay, good. Okay, so we've got this first step. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to sort of reflect that triangle into our second quadrant. So we're going to move it over here and everything else is gonna stay the same. So, this now here is my 30 degrees. This is still root three, but remember now it would be negative because my x value would be negative. My r is still two, r is always positive. 
and my y value here is still one and it's still positive. Okay, and we're gonna do the exact same thing now. Remember when we're working at this over here, that's now theta. Okay, so think about it like that. We're thinking of now 180 minus 30 degrees, which is 150 degrees. Okay, but don't panic about that just yet. Let's go through these again. I want to know what sine 150 is, because that's what this angle here is going to be. Cos 150 and tan 150. So let's start from the beginning. What is sine 150? You can look at the triangle or you can use your calculator. Both of them are absolutely fine. I don't mind which one you use. Beautiful. Nice job, guys. Sine 150 is a half. Now, isn't that interesting? What did we see earlier? We saw that sine 30 is a half. And now we're saying sine 150 is a half. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Now I want the answer for cos 150. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Cos 150 is now negative root 3 over 2 because we've got this negative x value. That's the difference. Here it was a positive x value, and now it's a negative x value. So now cos 150 is negative root 3 over 2. But if we have a look at what we did with our original triangle, we still had root 3 over 2. We're now just saying it's negative. And so I want you to start thinking about our letters. All students take care. Our all, all three of our ratios are positive. In our second quadrant, sine is positive. So thinking of that and thinking of your triangle, what is tan 150 going to be? Tan 150 is absolutely going to be negative. And what's its value going to be? You can use quadrant one to help you. Good, negative root three over three or negative one over root three. You could also say negative root three over three. See, it's the same as this one over here. It's exactly the same as this one over root three. The only thing that's happening is it's now negative because we are in quadrant two and in quadrant two, only sign is positive. Okay, now we're gonna move into quadrant three. So I'm gonna do this exact same thing. Basically, I'm like creating a little bow tie for us. I'm gonna make that 30 degrees over there. So now I'm traveling 180 degrees plus another 30, which means I'm traveling 210 degrees. Okay, and my negative root three is still negative root three, but now this y value is negative one and my r is still two. So now I want to know what sine of 210 is, what cos of 210 is, and what tan of 210 is. And now you should see a pattern. You should be able to do these three really quickly. First of all, which one of those is going to be positive? Is it going to be sine, cos, or tan? Good. Tan is the only one that's going to be positive. Our other two are going to be negative. Then we literally can just look at what we've already done because we now know that we've got this pattern that happens as we start moving around our quadrants. This half was the same as that half. The only thing that starts changing is we have positive and negatives. So sine of 210, and if you are stressed and you don't believe it, you can put it into your calculator, you'll see is negative a half. And cos 210 is going to be negative root 3 over 2. And tan 210 is going to be 1 over root 3 or root 3 over 3. And then our last 
quadrant that we move into. Our last edge of our little bow tie over here. This is still negative one. That's positive root three and that's two. And we know in this quadrant cos is positive, okay? So now I'm traveling all the way around. And so my angle is gonna be 330 degrees. So sine 330, cos 330, and tan 330. Now in this quadrant, which one of those is gonna be positive? Sine, cos, or tan? Good, because it's our C, so cos is the one that's gonna be positive. That's positive, and our other two are negative. And then we can just look at our other answers. So sine, oh, sorry, I'm jumping around. So sine of 330 is gonna be negative a half. Cos of 330 is gonna be positive root three over two, and tan of 330 is gonna be negative one over root three or root three over three. Okay, and this is essentially why we can do reduction because if I have a look at this, if I said, well, what is sine 150 degrees, but I was told I'm not allowed to use my calculator, I can rewrite that as that's sine 180 minus 30 degrees because 180 minus 30 is 150. And we know that that would be the same as sine 30 and 30 is a special angle. So then we can use our calculators. So this is why we are allowed to use reduction and why reduction works. But now we're gonna kind of talk about how we do reduction in a bit more detail. Do I need to sit on this page any longer? Just let me know if you need some time. Okay. So let's start working with some reduction. The first important thing here is whenever you see the words in trig without a calculator, we need to think special angles, okay? So that's 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90, 180. Well, they will never ask us to do 180, so let's just keep it there for now, okay? And once we have our answer in special angles, then we are allowed to use our calculator. So it's telling us we can't use our calculator. We can, but we have to show all of our steps of working. <coughs> so our first goal is to rewrite this 120 using either 180 or 360 and plusing or minusing one of our special angles. So how can I rewrite tan 120? How can I rewrite 120 to have 180 plus or minus an angle? How can I rewrite that? So as an example, if I had tan 150, I could rewrite that as tan 180 minus 30 because 180 minus 30 is 50, and 30 is one of my special angles. So can you think, how can I write tan 120? What would that look like? Nice, good. Good. Tan 180 minus 60. So we've used our 180, and then we've subtracted 60, which is one of our special angles. So we're allowed to use 60. Good, good answers coming, guys. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to move onto our Cartesian plane. Okay, this is zero and 360, 90, 180, 270. Now, you obviously don't have to write those every time we do a question. We're just going to get into the hang of it. When we are moving in a positive direction, 
we move anti-clockwise. And when we are moving in a negative direction, we move clockwise. So let's have a look at what this question is asking us to do. It's telling us to travel 180 degrees and then minusing 60 degrees. So we're traveling positive 180 and then we're minusing 60 to get over there. And that leads us into quadrant two. Okay. So in quadrant two, what do you think our answer would be for tan? Is our answer going to be positive or is our answer going to be negative in quadrant two? Negative. Excellent. Okay. And so we use that to figure out what sign is going to be at the front. So now I know it's going to be negative tan. And then we take whatever angle we figured out that second angle to be is 60. Okay. So we would write negative tan 60. Now I know this is irritating because you could just check it all on your calculating and answer. But if you don't show these steps of working, they won't give you any marks. So all of these steps are important. Then, because 60 is a special angle, now we're allowed to use our calculator. So if we put tan 60 into our calculator, we get root 3. So our final answer is negative root 3. And that's where we stop. Okay. So let's go through the steps here for these types of questions. The first thing we want to do is we want to rewrite it as a 180 plus or minus or a 360 plus or minus a special angle. The next thing we do is we look at our Cartesian plane and we see if in that quadrant, it's gonna be positive or negative, And we take that second angle. Because it's a special angle for our last step, we are then allowed to use the calculator to get an answer. Okay. Let's try B. So again, for B, I want you to think of three steps. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to try this by yourselves. Three steps. Look at your Cartesian plane and then work out your answer. And all of these steps are important. Let's go through it step by step. First step, we need to rewrite it using a special angle. So I'm going to write that as cos 180 minus 30. Next step, I'm going to go into my Cartesian plane. I'm going to travel 180 degrees, positive, minus 30. And that puts me into quadrant two. And in quadrant two, cos is negative. So it's going to be negative cos 30 degrees. Then I can go into my calculator and I'll see I get negative root 3 over 2. Okay. So one step. <laughs> it's okay. First step, get your reduction. Second step, find out if it's positive or negative in that quadrant. Third step, use the calculator. Try another one. Sign 135. So remember, first step, get it with, so reduce it using a special angle. Find out if it's going to be positive or negative in that quadrant, and then get your answer.
I've helped with the first step if you're struggling with it. Look at those three beautiful steps shining through. Yay. Okay, first step, we've done our reduction. Then we're going to travel 180 degrees minus 45 degrees, which puts us in quadrant two, where sine is positive. So it's definitely going to be positive. Sine 45. Now we can use our calculator. Sine 45 is root two over two. Glorious. Well done. Yay. Okay. These are exactly the same, except now instead of minusing, we're just going to be plusing. Okay, so it's, it works exactly the same way. I'm going to talk you through the first one and then I'm going to let you do the next two alone. So here, if I wanted 225, I could rewrite that as tan 180 plus 45 degrees. Then I'm going to move into my Cartesian plane. All students take care. I'm going to travel 180 degrees. Then I'm going to travel 45 degrees more because it's plus. That puts me in quadrant three. In quadrant three, tan is positive. So that's the same as saying tan 45 degrees. Now I can use my calculator and I get an answer of one. Okay, so it's exactly the same as what we've been doing, except now we're gonna be plusing. So give B a try for me. Just remember to show all of your steps. So remember there should be three steps. It is root three over two, but the sign is, is not correct. Good, that's a great first step. Okay, I'm very happy with that first step. Let's write it in. Cause. 180 plus 30. Beautiful. Move on, to, move on to the Cartesian plane. All students take care. Okay. Yes. Look at that second step. 180 degrees plus another 30 degrees puts us in quadrant three where cos is negative. So negative cos 30. And then we can use our calculator and we will get negative root three over two. So you were getting the cos 30, which was good, but the sign was wrong. So we just always need to be careful to make sure we're in the right quadrant when we go through these. Good. Okay. Try sign 240 for me. You're catching on to these nicely though, guys, that we need to some harder questions just now. I just want to make sure you understand the basics before we before we do two two crazy things. Think about your steps. Good. Great first step. Great first step. Move on to your Cartesian plane. Huh. 
180 degrees plus another 60. And in quadrant three, the sine is going to be negative. Negative sine 60. Then we can use our calculator. And we will get negative root three over two. Nice, good job guys. Okay, very similar situation, except instead of using 180 now, we're gonna use 360 and we can use 180 or 360. So these are just looking at our different options. So I'm just gonna talk you again. I'm gonna talk you through A and then I'm gonna let you go wild with B and C. So if I'm looking at A, I can rewrite that as tan 360 minus 30. And when we're doing reduction, the important thing here is we want to keep this first one either 180 or 360. Sometimes we don't have a choice and we have to use 90 or 270, but we don't want to use those if we don't have to because they're mean. We'll get to them later, probably in our next lesson. So if we can avoid them, we avoid them when we keep it at 180 or 360. Then we move on to our Cartesian plane, exactly the same thing as that we've been doing. We travel 360 degrees. So we travel the whole way, positive. Then we go negative 30. So that puts us into quadrant four. And in quadrant four, tan is going to be negative. So that's gonna be negative tan 30. Then we can chuck that straight into our calculator because it's a special angle. And we would get negative root three over three. Let's see how you manage with B and C. I want you to do the same thing you've been doing. And if possible, in the comments, when you're writing up your answers, show me all three steps as you've worked through it. So how can we rewrite that cos 315? That's our first goal. There we go, nice. Careful, Lisa, if we, if we add it, we're going to get 405. Three sixty minus 45, there we go. Okay, think about which quadrant we're in. All students take care. We travel 360 degrees, we minus 45 degrees. Cos is positive in quadrant four. So cos 45, chuck that into the calculator root two over two. Yay. I feel like I'm seeing good answers. Okay, so just be careful with that negative. I think what happened there was you just went into the wrong quadrant. I think you moved up instead of moving down. And when it's a negative, we move clockwise. <coughs> okay, give sine 300 a try for me. And then we're actually gonna jump onto some tricky questions. This is the last easiest easy-ish question I'm gonna give you. Then we're gonna get on to the juicy ones.
Great answers coming in. Sine 360 minus 60. 360 degrees minus 60 puts us in quadrant four. Negative sine 60. Into our calculator, sine 60 gives us negative root three over two. Yay! Woohoo! Okay, good. I feel like we're feeling good with these questions. So I'm going to go on to a nasty question. We're going to zoom through a whole page here. Um, okay. Oh, I'm so excited, guys. Okay. I'm going to help you with A, and then you're going to do B by yourself. So let's have a look at A. It looks, it looks a bit different because we've got thetas now. We don't have special angles, but it's exactly the same. Okay, we're going to draw our Cartesian plane. Zero and 360. Remember, you don't need to write these. I'm just writing them to help us. Oh, I'm just going on my own little path over there. There we go. Cool. Okay, all students take care. Let's look at the first one. In the first situation, I have sine of 180, so 180 degrees, plus theta. That's my little extra theta that I'm plusing. And when I plus that theta, it puts me into quadrant three, where sine is negative. So that first one is going to be negative sine theta. Then I'm going to look at the second part. So now I'm traveling 180 degrees, but I'm minusing theta. I'm going in the opposite direction. That puts me in quadrant two where sine is positive. That becomes positive sine theta. I'm putting it in brackets, but you could also say times. It means the same thing. A negative times a positive is a negative. Sine times sine is sine squared. And that's our final answer. Isn't that quite cool? I think it's cool. <laughs> but Maybe it takes time for it to feel cool. Using that logic, I'm throwing you in the deep end here, and I want you to give B a try for me. And remember, don't panic when you see questions like this. You break it up step by step. You start with this. Then you look at the next one. Then you look at the next one, one step at a time. Okay, so give B a try for me. Don't forget to draw out your Cartesian plane to help you. Sure. Okay. Those of you who are working on B, you're happy. I'm happy for you to carry on working through B. I'm just going to re-explain A for those who need it. So if you need help with A, listen. If you don't, carry on working through B. Okay, let's go. So we're going to start with 180 plus theta. And we're dealing with sine. So first, we're traveling this 180 degrees. So that's 180 degrees. And then instead of, in our last ones, we had like plus 30 or plus 45. Instead of a number now, we're just saying plus theta. So I'm just going to plus a little bit extra. That's my theta that I'm adding. And that puts me in quadrant three. And in quadrant three, sine is going to be negative. So I'm going to write that as negative sine theta. Then I'm going to look at the next part. So now I have sine again, 180 degrees again. But now instead of plusing theta, I'm minusing theta. So I'm not going to carry on going in that direction. I'm going to go up because it's negative. So it's the opposite direction. That puts me in quadrant two. And in quadrant two, I have, um, oh, sorry, I'm saying four, but this is quadrant three. I'm using the plot, guys, sorry. Um, in quadrant two, sine is positive. So this is going to be sine theta. Then I would just get to my answer. So a negative times a positive is a negative, and sine times sine is sine squared theta. So that would be our final answer for A. Okay. With that knowledge, give B a try. I know I'm throwing you in the deep end here, guys. I know that these are tricky. Just want you to do your best. Sorry. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, we have our first answer coming in. So let's try this. Oh, nice answers. Okay, first step, cos 360 all the way around minus theta, which puts me in quadrant four. Okay, and in quadrant four, cos is positive. So that's going to be cos theta. So that's this first one. Now, the great thing with reduction is every time we do something, we get a mark. So you get a mark for getting that cos theta. Next, sine 180 plus theta. We're going to look at this one here. 180 plus theta puts us in quadrant three. And in quadrant three, sine is negative. So we're going to multiply that by negative sine theta. Okay. Again, we get a mark if we got that right. Then we're going to look at the bottom. Tan, 360 degrees minus theta puts us in quadrant four. And in quadrant four, tan would be negative. So this is going to be over negative tan theta. And again, we get a mark. So if you got to this point over here, you've got three marks, which is exciting. Okay. Now we have to remember something from last year. And that was that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. And so I'm going to change that tan theta at the bottom. So first of all, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so I can just get rid of those signs. And so at the top, I've got cos theta times sine theta. And I'm dividing that by tan theta, and tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. That means the same thing. Tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. And if we have a fraction and we have a divide, we change that divide to a times. So we have cos theta times sine theta times cos theta over sine theta. And so these get to cancel each other out. And cos theta times cos theta is cos squared theta. And that's our final answer. We get a very satisfying answer at the end of it. So let's see how these marks would work here if you got a question like this. Firstly, if you got those first three reductions, you've got three marks. Then you would get a mark for realizing that tan theta is sine theta for cos theta. And then you would get a mark for your final answer. So if you were unable to do this last little step here, you would still have gotten three of the five marks, which is exciting. Okay, we're gonna do one more. Um, let's try this one. And then we're going to call it a night. So we're just going to try C. So one more. And that's where we're going to end off tonight. Remember, the first few steps are just making sure you've gotten everything reduced. Okay, 
I know not everyone may have finished yet and don't panic. I'm only going through it because, because of our time. But don't worry, in our lesson on Thursday, we'll start with these types of questions again. Oh, we have an answer, That's very exciting. Okay, let's have a look. So the first one, we're traveling 180 degrees and then we're traveling theta, which puts us in quadrant three and in quadrant three sign is negative, but it's being squared. And so what that's actually saying is negative sine theta squared. And any negative that's being squared lands up becoming a positive. Okay. Then we have the next part. So we're going to say minus sine, so cos 180 degrees minus theta, which puts us in quadrant two, where cos is going to be negative. So it's going to be minus negative cos theta. And then our final step here, we've got cos 180 degrees plus theta. Again, cos is going to be negative, so negative cos theta. Okay. Next step, this negative becomes squared, so that just becomes sine squared theta. This negative and negative becomes a positive, and that positive and negative becomes a negative, so we're going to minus cos squared theta. And that is where we are going to leave it for today. There are more things that we can do at this point, but we will jump into those from Thursday. But if you got to this point, that's what makes me really happy. So there's one mark there, one mark there, one mark there, and then one mark for our answer. The thing that I care most about today is that you got those three over there. Okay, I know I've tracked a lot of information your way and I'm sorry. Um, I hope your brains feel like they have expanded a little bit in this last hour. And I'm going to pass the mic over to Michaela now. I hope you all have a lovely evening, though. Hey, hi, guys. Um, I'm just going to quickly share my screen. And yeah, we'll take you through everything. Okay, so well done, everyone. And yeah, this is a little bit tricky, um, but I think you guys are doing really well and participating really well. I think that's the key. So well done, everyone, for trying. Um, so we just went through our lesson three now, and lesson four is going to be on reduction part two. Today we did part one. And um, yeah, I just wanted to go through our leaderboard because we haven't done it in a while. Um, and I just uh, put together top three. So Tokazani is at number one with seven lessons done. Uh, Kanisile is at number two with six lessons done. And then uh, we have a tie for third place, which is Zintle and Sinesipo, who have done four. So well done, guys. Um, yeah, I think keep up all the hard work. Um, I'm sure it's going to pay off. Um, and yeah, I just want to say well done to everyone. Um, for your homework, um, you're going to go through trigonometry. Uh, you're going to pick that topic. And then once you are done, you're going to look at reduction. Um, so you have reduction 180 minus theta, as well as 180 plus theta and then um, 360 minus theta. So yeah, that's your homework for this week. I'm just gonna leave it up so maybe you can take a picture or just write it down, but that's it from me. And I just wanna thank everyone for all your participation and hard work. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next lesson. Well done, everyone. Hi guys.